Okay, in this video, we'll talk about what's new in uh, Flex 9.1. It is currently in beta, but I understand that Flex 9.1 will ship, will move from beta to stable pretty soon. I thought I'd show you what's new with it. So to begin with, those of you who don't know, um, Flex is a, it's an SIL product. You can get Flex by going either doing a Google search for Flex SIL or going to sil.org, clicking on language services, software and fonts, and clicking one of our featured product. And here's Flex, Fieldworks Language Explorer. And you click on downloads. And this is where you can get downloads. You can see that the current stable is Flex 9.0. Uh, right now we're demonstrating Flex uh, 9.1. So you would click on Flex 9.1. And then you can have the option to download. I am. The things that I am demonstrating, I pulled from the beta version release notes. So you can click on this if you wished. And you can scroll down up here. You see some of the new features that are added, as well as a long list of bugs that have been fixed. So you can see that our developers have been very busy trying to make this good. So that's where I'm coming from. So we're going to begin by going into Flex. Hit the OK button here. Just want to show that I'm using, I'm using Flex 9.1.10 beta. The OK button. All right, so the new things. The first thing to demonstrate that's new is automatic updates. This is a familiar feature in a lot of software products, but it's kind of new to Flex. We're going to click on Tools, go down to Options. And if you click on Updates, you will see that there's an um, option to check for automatically download updates for Fieldworks. Right now, I'm pulling from Beta. You have the option for Stable, um, beta or alpha. Alpha is the newly built update. So if there's a feature that you want or a fix that you desperately need that's they're testing that they haven't released yet, you might be able to get it in alpha if you know it's there. Um, right now, I'm using from beta. So I just wanted to show that that's there. That is new. Okay. Uh, another thing that is new in Flex 9.1 in, in send receive. You can see that right now you have the options for flash drive, chorus, or internet. These are all the same, but you can see that the password for language forward is missing. Click on settings. You can see my username, which will be blurred out. So, and you can see that there's no password. If I were to type the password in and click remember, it would remember the password. Um, so the option, if there's a reason or situation to where you don't want the password to rem be remained in flex or to stay in flex, you can take it out. Another thing that has changed is a low bandwidth, high bandwidth. I, I don't know what constitutes low bandwidth or high bandwidth, but I can tell you that when Flex does send receive, it chops the Fieldworks data file into parts. So I'm making an assumption that low bandwidth, it will chop it into even smaller parts to facilitate uh, making send receive easier. All right, so that is send receive. So I'm gonna introduce quickly that a new tool exists for for SAL, there's something called the Combine, which is intended to help in rapid word collection. Um, so the, the end result of this rapid word collection is a file that you can download out of the system and get into Flex. So you, you can download the file, you go into Flex, File, Import, Import Lexicon from the Combine. And I don't have an example to, to demonstrate, but then you just work through the process and then you can import from the Combine. That's a handy feature. Um, the next thing that I want to demonstrate is a significant bug fix. It was a significant bug fix in that it was causing pain for some of the people that I serve. Here at PIAP, we have a linguistics department that teaches, gives us that the students working towards a master's degree in linguistics will, will, will go through. And one of the things that they need to do is to export the discourse chart from Flex into Word for various assignments. And that didn't work in Flex 9.0 with the latest versions of Microsoft Office. So I'm not going to demonstrate the problem. I'm just going to demonstrate that it works. So if I go to text and words, click on text chart, file, export discourse chart into Microsoft Word XML. It's going to put it in my documents, go XML tests, uh, Flex uh, X, XML Word test. And I open up, go into Word, and you can see that it's exported and it's exported the chart and Word opens it. In 
if you're doing this in Flex 9.0 export and we're in Office uh, 365 with the latest versions of Office, this does not work. So that's a, a bug fix. Okay. Another thing that I wanted to demonstrate is actually something that's been that has actually existed in Flex since 7.2, but I only recently learned about it. And, and this matters in my part of the world. It's the ability to get Flex to understand um, languages that don't use spaces as word boundaries. So I'm going to close to my example. This is an example of text with no punctuation. And Thai, if you use Thai script in the proper way, uh, there are there's no space between words. As my understanding, in the past, if you wanted to analyze, analyze this text, you had to either put slashes in, which is ugly, or actually insert spaces. But that didn't work. So if you go to analyze, you see this top one here, and the second one, the flex doesn't know what to do with this, but it's made a guess at the one with the slashes and it's made a guess at the one with the spaces, but it's also made a guess down here. And this is broken up. And if you go back to baseline, you can see that there's these little gray bars here. And that's because I've got flex set to view invisible spaces. If I turn that off, you, you don't know they're there. If I go to analyze and scroll to the bottom to the, to the fourth par fifth paragraph, you see that it's breaking it correctly. The question is, how does Flex do this? How do you get Flex to do it? Well, one way to do it, well, the way to do it is click on insert, click insert invisible spaces, which is something I've only recently learned about. So now I've got Flex to configure. So if I click the mouse, it's adding a space. So if I go over here, after the gog guy, adding a space, then if I go, after the, the long woo, it's adding a space. So if I go to analyze, now Flex knows what to do with it. So wait about the second one. Well, there's another option I wanted to demonstrate. If you highlight the whole text and click on insert, guess word breaks. Flex makes a, a guess and it's inserting breaks. And I don't quite sure, I'm not quite sure how this works. I think it's going based on the lexicon. So the the it's looking in the words in the lexicon and making guesses. So I think that's how it works. So the more words you have in your lexicon, the better this will feel, the better it will demonstrate. So that is inserting um, zero width spaces into your baseline text so that you can analyze it in flex. And this allows the text to look proper. This looks like good tie as opposed to with these slashes in the spaces. So that is inserting zero width spaces. Another thing that we need to do every now and again in Flex is check for FlexBridge updates. Uh, of course, I clicked that and it brought it over to screen. And the, uh, FlexBridge is the underlying technology that is used to let you update to, to send and receive to get to the servers. It's called FlexBridge. And at the moment, that's updating independent of Flex. So some, every now and again, you need to go and go check to make sure it's current. But when you do this, you need to make sure you're, if you're working with multiple team members, make sure everybody's using the same version of FlexBridge. So that's updating the FlexBridge. Now I'm gonna demonstrate the changes that have been made in the discourse area. And this is the area of Flex where the Flex developers have done a lot of work in Flex 9.1. This is a, a feature add. A lot of the other updates are bug fixes. This is they were working to make the, the text chart area better. So I'm going to click on example text. And so this is my text. And you can see I don't have much just um, charted out. I should acknowledge on the front end that I am not a, a linguist. So I am basically telling you how the tool works. Um, kind of like I barely know how to drive and I'm telling you where the steering wheel are. That, that's kind of the idea. But those who are linguists will understand what's, what's, what I'm attempting to just demonstrate. So in times past, you can only chart the, the text in one way. And you kind of took it as Flex gave it to you. But now they've added the ability for you to add your own templates. So if you click over here to the right, there's the default. This is the out of the box what comes from Flex. And you can see uh, I, I've already added another chart called constituent chart, 
but then there's also add new template. So if when you open up Flex, if you've not already added a chart, you just get default and add a new template. So I'm going to click on add a new template. And this brings you a box saying you'll go to the lists. And you can see that highlighted now in list is text, consti text constituent chart template. So you can see here is my default. Here's the constituent chart that I've created. And here's this new, new thing, the option for adding a new one right here. So I can click on insert text constituent chart template, or I can have edited the one with the stars, and, and now I can begin to add. So I'm going to show you where my information is coming from. So not being a linguist, I couldn't come up with top of my head of example charts. So I did a, a quick search and I found this site, and he's got several charts. Here's one here. It's called the Inga chart. It's coming from his text. So I'm going to attempt to recreate this. So you can see the pre-nuclear independent clauses, SOP, and then post-nuclear. So I'm going to bring this off screen so I can look at it while working. And I'm going to bring back up Flex. So I'm going to call this the name. Is, I'm going to call it the Inga chart. And I'm going to insert text. And this is going to be the pre-nuclear. Elements. And then I'm going to come back to in the text. You always have to be careful where you're going. And then I'm going to in independent clauses. Now inside independent clauses, I'm going to add underneath it S. And then I'm going to go back to independent clause because if I inserted there, it would go underneath S. I want it to go in and add O in parentheses because that's what the, the chart I'm pulling from says. And now just to demonstrate what happens, oh, three levels, never mind that. So I'm going to come back to independent clause and add P. And now I'm going to go back to, well, did that, this is what I intended to demonstrate. So if I'm in the wrong place and I add a sub item from here, I type post nuclear. All right, and then I realize I've, I've, I've done the wrong thing. I can right click on it and I can either move up so it would be above the P or move down so it's below the P. Like if I put the O and the P in the wrong order, if I want to promote, so now post-nuclear element is up, but it's promoted, but it's in the wrong place. So this is where I want to go down, move down, move down. All right, so I can close that. So now I've added a new template. I'm calling it the Inga text based solely from this example I'm pulling from. Now, if I go back to text and words, and if I look, I have my, uh, Constituent chart, there's that parenthesis, the question mark and the Inga text. So I want to get rid of this question mark. So how do you delete things? So I'm going to go back to the lists, my text constituent chart templates. And here's the one with the, these uh, asterisks. That is where the question marks are pulling from. So I'm going to highlight it and I'm going to hit delete. So I get a warning. Do I want to delete the following item? Hit delete. Yeah, so it's gone. So now I just have the three. And I can go back to text and words. And now if I hit the little down arrow, you can see constituent chart and Inga text. So I click on constituent chart and I'm just gonna add things. Um, again, I am not a linguist. So then I'm gonna go to subject and I'm gonna highlight one body. Uh, and so now I'm gonna go to Inga chart just to demonstrate. So now here's a third one to want. Uh, I mean, I'm going to go to subject. And then one do is it's, it's just tie classifier. Um, so now if I switch, you can see if I switch between the text, this is all I really want to do. Go to default, go to constituent chart, go to Inga text. So now they're all three there. It's I can 
uh, sort through the ones I want and the, the flex retains it. I don't have to choose between one and rebuild it every time. So that's a nice addition. So the next thing I wanna demonstrate are changes that have been made to tagging. In times past, if you wanted to tag, just like in the, the, the discourse chart or text chart, you only had one option. And if you did a lot of work and you wanted to look at something else, you had to re-tag everything and you lost the previous work. And that was, that was a pain point. You can understand why. So if we go into tagging now, if I click on, I can right click. And you hear our four options, four broad categories, grammatical relation, fun, relations and functional, syntax, semantics and syntax. So I can pick, this is a uh, da, 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 da. again. I confess to not being a linguist. I'm just demonstrating. I make it a subject, and um, I want this one to be a, a, a direct object. Now, if I want to change this to be in times past, if I want to look at syntax, I can make it a. If I wanted to make this a uh, verb phrase. I would lose my previous work, but I haven't. It's still there. And I can go back and then I can go down to uh, semantics. It's the actor. I, again, I don't know. I'm just demonstrating that you get off, you have all four options. And this is where I really don't know. So let's go clause. All right. If that happens to be true, that's because I'm guessing. All right. So, but I just wanted to demonstrate that tagging is possible with all four categories and they can be retained. All right. So another thing I wanted to demonstrate is that um, the interaction with Webinary. SIL's product Webinary is, is a way that we can digitally publish lexicons or dictionaries to the internet. And, and Webinary has had a change to the way you, you interact with it such that the only way you can upload webinary now is through 9.1. If I were to go to file, oh, oh, sorry. You have to be in lexicon for this to work. If you go to file, upload to webinary, it will all look the same except for there's an API difference. So there's nothing you, the end user have to do to configure uh, Flex 9.1 to interact with webinary provided you've already had it figured in nine, you just need to update it and it'll work. And um, so that's pretty much all there is to that. All right, um, thank you very much. That is just a quick synopsis of the what's new in Flex 9.1 beta. Thank you.